Hello there, what is scope in computer programming and why does it matter so much? I'm going to show you exactly what scope is in JavaScript, let's get started. We'll start with global scope. I'll just put some code in and click save. I'm using Visual Studio code, I've got the console panel open in the DevTools just here and I've just put a quick message within the display window. So first of all, a global variable is a variable that's declared within global scope and global scope is the root position within the script. So anywhere that is not within curly braces, for example, this global variable just here is declared within the root of the script and it's not within curly braces because so these yellow curly braces of this if statement and therefore that's what makes it global. Global variables can simply be seen from anywhere in your program. There's not really that much more to say other than in a way you can think of them as the default state to be in if they're not within any other blocks of code. Block scope in JavaScript applies to anything inside curly braces. You don't even need to precede it with an if statement or a while loop or a function, although technically that's function scope which we'll get to in a moment. These variables being declared within these two yellow curly braces are within block scope. And that means we cannot access the let and the const keyword variables outside of those curly braces. We can access the var declared variable because block scope doesn't apply to the var keyword. And if I click save now, we can see that we're displaying the number five. It's accessing the var variable from inside those curly braces, effectively like the curly braces are not even there. On the other hand, if we uncomment this line and click save, we get a reference error, num2 is not defined. The reason for that is simply because the let keyword and the const keyword are block scoped within the curly braces, like I said. You'll notice that it's complaining about num2 and not num3. That's because the script stops running once it runs into the first error. So for example, if I delete num2, and click save again, you'll now see that it's complaining about num3. Now that's a good starting point for us to understand what block scope is, but it's by no means the full story, which brings us to the next example. I'll just click undo and save again to get us back to where we were. And now I'm going to replace that block of code with the third example. Numerous nested if statements, if statements with inside each other. The number one rule of scoping for me is to remember that inner scopes can access the outer scope, but outer scope cannot access the inner scope. So for example, all of this is valid. When I click save, let's see what we get. We can see A equals one, B equals two, C equals three. We can cause an error by uncommenting this line, for example, and then I'll explain exactly why this is happening. We've got an uncaught reference error, C is not defined. The scope of the first if statement is attempting to access the scope of the second if statement. The second if statement is this code between the purple curly braces within which variable C is being defined. And we can't go from outer scope to inner scope, but we can go the other way around. I'll just undo that. That is why it's okay to access variable A and variable B from the scope of if statement two, because as I said, the inner scopes can see everything within the higher scope. Inner scope two can see all of outer scope and all of inner scope one, and inner scope one can see all of outer scope. That's also reflected by the indentation, the formatting of the code. That now brings us to example four, now, what do we have here? A for loop nested inside an if statement. Anything nested inside anything else in the way of block scope is the same. So we can have, as in the previous example, three if statements, one nested inside another, but we can also nest a for loop inside an if statement or a while loop inside an if statement or for loops inside for loops. Let's run this anyway, just to see what we get. And there we go, we've got five iterations of the for loop. Each iteration 
is accessing value one, two, three, adding those together and multiplying those by count to give us these different values just to make it a little bit more interesting. I just wanted to show you the difference between VAR and let coming into play in this situation. We've got value four being displayed, which is declared by the VAR keyword, the VAR keyword, and that's giving us a value of 200. And we've also got outside of the if run code if statement, value one and value four being displayed to give us a value of 250. So that's this 50 added on to this 200. That's okay. This line is allowed to do that because both of those values, value one and value four, being declared with the ver keyword are accessible outside of the block scope because as we said before, block scope doesn't apply to ver declared variables. But if we uncomment this line and click save, we get a reference error, value five is not defined. One's declared with VAR, one's declared with the let keyword, and so we can't access value five. And so that brings us on to the next example, Function scope is pretty much the same as block scope, apart from variables that are declared with the var keyword are also not visible outside of the scope, whereas outside of block scope, variables declared with the var keyword are visible. So this variable int1 cannot be seen outside of the function. It can be seen outside of the if statement though, and that's why we're able to return it just here. And if we click save, we can see that we get int1 plus int2 equals 45. That's obviously correct, 20 plus 25 is 45. But we can't access it outside of the function scope. That means if I uncomment this line, we should expect to see an error. And that's simply because we're trying to access it just there outside of the function scope, and therefore we get the error. Let's move on to the next example. Now what are we looking at? lexical scoping what on earth is that versus dynamic scoping javascript uses lexical scoping also known as static scoping as opposed to using dynamic scoping what lexical scoping is lexical scoping refers to the variable from the point of view of being inside the function body whereas dynamic scoping refers to the variable from the point of view where the function is called from in this example then, we've got variable x being declared and initialized within global scope. Obviously that means we can access it within function one, no problem. But if we were using a language that used dynamic scoping instead of lexical or static, as it's also known, then when we call the function from within the if statement just here, this is where the function is being invoked. According to the definition of dynamic scoping, it refers to the variable from the point of view where the function is called from. The function is being called from within the if statement. The let variable x is also being declared within the if statement. Let's just run this and see what we get. We get an answer five twice, but if we were talking about dynamic scope, we would expect to see this second value in the console panel just there be the value of 10 if it was dynamic scoping, but it's not. JavaScript is lexical or static scoping, and therefore we get the value five twice. That now brings us to the last example, example seven. And so even when we've got a function nested inside another function, the rule whereby inner scope is able to access outer scope remains the same as it does with block scope. So not really any difference in the way that we need to think about it. The one thing I've not mentioned so far is hoi 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 hoisting, hoisting, hoisting.